switch to English and we have a Hendrik uh, Olafsson here in Iceland. Uh, well, first of all, uh, thank you for having us here in your beautiful country. I mean, we have enjoyed it like really, really a lot. That's, that's good to hear. Yeah. Iceland, uh, for a lot of people, it seems, uh, it sounds, when, when I first mentioned people that I was going, I was coming here to Iceland with Land Rover, people say, wow, like, how far is it? How cold is it? How extreme? I mean, like, yeah. people don't have a clear idea of where is it, how is it here in Iceland. Yeah, that, I can understand that, because just the naming yeah. of the country, Iceland. You know, here in Iceland, we have an uh, ocean climate. We have the Atlantic current, warm current that comes from the south part of the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. So Iceland is placed in the middle of it. So we have, in a way, we could call it a mild winter, yeah. comparing to all the countries that are not in, the, in this warm current. So <clears throat> it is not as cold as people think. Yeah. But of course, uh, here in Iceland, we have unpredictable weather because of the ocean climate. And... Uh, that means sometimes we can have four seasons over one day. <laughs> yeah, we experienced a little bit of that yeah. yesterday, actually. Yeah, yeah I can imagine, imagine that, yeah. especially at this time of year. And when you even get closer to the spring, it is even more unpredictable yeah. because then the winter king and, and the summer uh, spring is, is fighting together. So a lot of wind it, it can hit off. Actually, our original flight was delayed 24 hours because on Monday you had a pretty big storm. Here. Yeah, we are used to stormy weather, especially in, in January, December, January. And, uh, but when you get closer to the, to the spring, it's, it's, it's slowed down. Yeah. Well, when we finally got here, I mean, uh, we didn't sleep much, but uh, I mean, uh, oh, there's like so much energy in, in many ways yeah. here in Iceland. I mean, you have like, you can explain all the, about the geothermal uh, yeah. energy and all that, but like just the people, the place, everything like pulls you with energy here. Yeah, this is of course an island. So I think in general, islanders are more uh, energyful than people yeah. at the continent, maybe. And also the nature here is so... Um, um, strong and you have always the nature in, in front of you yeah. so um, Icelanders are, are used to uh, this huge nature and that, of course that has affect our culture and Icelanders are, are daily you know quite uh, energyful people in that manner that they are quite active and this country has only 330,000 citizens mm -hmm. on this big island and you have to be, you know, on your toes yeah. to keep up the uh, life standard that we want to have. Yeah, and there's so much to do here. I mean, we came uh, here with Land Rover to drive the new Discovery Sport uh, SUV. And uh, we went through beautiful uh, country land and, and, and mountains yeah. and, and valleys and all that. Yeah. So uh, tell us a few of the uh, activities that people can, uh, can enjoy here in Iceland. Yeah, there are plenty of activities that people do. Uh, you know... Jeep driving is quite popular, going up to the glaciers for the snowmobiles, river rafting, whale watching, caving, ice caves, ice climbing, ice walk on the glaciers. Always ice, ice, ice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> more or less combined with ice, but we also have something that is combined with the warmer things, like yeah. the Blue Lagoon and all the geothermal energy resources that exist here. There are pools everywhere, yeah. outdoor pools, that we can use all year round. So that is not only only combined with ice; it's also combined with warm. Yeah. Can we talk about uh, about the thermal energy uh, thing here going on in Iceland because it, it's huge? I mean, like you don't use pretty much electricity; it's, it's uh, provided by that. Right? Yeah, Icelanders are so privileged because we have a humongous of uh, energy resources like the geothermal uh, uh, energy that we use to heat up the houses and even generate electricity from the steam. And then we have the hydropower plants and uh, that could uh, serve us with. The, you know, this kind of uh, renewable energy resources that we have there. So there is no use for fossil fuels for heating houses and, and to make electricity. So uh, that is, in that, that manner, it is a paradise for, for energy resources. Yeah. And speaking about cars, I mean, electric cars, since electricity is like, so I'm not going to say easy, but it's like so abundant here because of the thermal energy. Yeah. I mean, cars, electric cars are going to be a big uh, factor here. And maybe, as you were saying before, while we were driving, in 10, 15 years, you won't even need gas for cars. Yeah, probably, if uh, the authorities are good enough to plan it. But uh, I think, you know, Icelanders in the common future has no need for fossil fuels like uh, gas, uh, gasoline for cars. And uh, so in the common future, Iceland will be 100% self-sustainable with uh, energy. Yeah. So driving here in Iceland, um, driving the right side, uh, not like in, in the left, like in Britain, right? Like, no, so we have it on the right side. Yeah, on the right side. Talk about a little bit of uh, 
of the rules. And I mean, like, it's pretty much yeah. like anywhere in the world. But uh, yeah, we have uh, rules that you are not allowed to go out of the track. And uh, when we have snow, for instance, in the highlands, you are allowed to go out of the track because then you don't destroy the uh, the uh, soil or vegetation. And we do that. We 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 have jeeps here, uh, like we call the super trucks or super jeeps, where we have big tires on. And that is quite popular to drive up to the glaciers and uh, drive in the highlands. And you can only do that when when the highlands is covered with snow. Oh, okay. And during the summer or during the spring, when the snow melts away, uh, then you are not allowed to drive out of the track. And we have quite we're quite strict about that because uh, we are dealing here with quite fragile nature. So if everybody would, you know, drive out of the tracks, we would destroy this island immediately. Yeah, when uh, when um, we drove yesterday, the people from Land Rover told us about that. Like you cannot, you are not allowed to go off road. But when we got to the roads, I mean, some of those roads, to, from from people in the U.S. at least, I mean, that's pretty extreme yeah. uh, off roading. Yeah, I mean, like extreme driving, right? That's the beauty with Iceland. You can even even you are on a track or or what you call it, gravel roads. Uh, you can even during this, the summer uh, there are some rivers crossing those roads, so you have to cross the rivers. So it's quite challenging to drive here in the highlands during yeah. the summer, and lo lots of people come here to experience that. Yeah. So um, when people come from the states, uh, and again, as I, we started the conversation, some people think that this is way too far, but it's not that far from the U.S. No, I think from New York, five hours and twenty minutes. Yeah. Straight from New York to Keflavik Airport. So. Excellent, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, oh, Kaplavik Airport. It used to be a US, U.S. Marine base, right, or Army it, base. Yeah, it was an Army base there for about 60 years, right after the Second World War. And um, they left the, air, uh, the base for about eight years ago. So there is no military action in Iceland. Uh, Iceland is, has no clue about... Um, no army or No anything. army, yeah, no, yeah. there's no army. But, so, but Iceland is a member of NATO, so that is the only connection... Uh, for the Icelanders to, to some. So when the U.S. military uh, base people left, I mean, that I, I, I would assume it created uh, some kind of uh, economic impact in, in uh, the region? Yeah, in the region, yeah. But uh, <clears throat> they left mainly because uh, the North uh, Atlantic uh, area was not as, import, as important when the Soviet Union existed. Uh, exist. yeah. So uh, there was hardly no work for them to do to control the, the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> now maybe now today they, now they, they should are, have opened it again. <laughs> yeah, maybe because we some people have heard about that the uh, the North uh, Pole will be open for yeah. for uh, for traffic for for cargo ships. And maybe in the coming future that uh, this part of the world will be more important for the army work. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, as, as you were saying, like, Iceland is a very peaceful country mm. and, like, uh, the people are really mm. uh, nice and enjoy life. Even though in this time of the year, we don't get a lot of uh, day, uh, sunlight. So short days, but still a lot of to do here. Yeah. It's, yeah. We have about five, six hours daylight at this time of year in, in January. But it's kicking up quite fast now for coming months. And, but even though you can do a lo loads of things uh, because this combination between the nature and the geothermal energy is uh, beautiful. You can go into the icy uh, areas and then you can dip into the hot springs. <laughs> yeah. So um, what would you recommend for people who have never come? What would be the best way to organize a, a trip here to Iceland? Oh, that's a complicated question. But, uh, you know, you have nature everywhere. Even in Reykjavik, it only takes you 20 minutes to drive out of the Reykjavik. You are in the middle of nowhere, actually. And uh, you are surrounded by nature wherever you go. So there are plenty of waterfalls. And uh, you can take the Golden Circle. That is a day trip where we, you can go to the uh, national park where the uh, tectonical rifts are. And you can go to the geysers and you can take a look at the spectacular waterfalls. And there are so many things to see. You can go to the shore where they, we have the black sandy beaches. Uh, combined with those uh, rock formation, that is uh, unbelievable to see. And even though the Icelandic language is very different from anything else, I mean, pretty much everybody speaks English here, right? Yeah, everybody can speak English, and Icelanders are our language people. Um, we speak this old uh, Nordic language that we call Icelandic, and uh, that is actually a Germanic uh, language, but pretty old one. But everybody are English-speaking. Yeah. And um, currency, you have your, you're not we part have, of the you know, European euro, so you don't use the euro here, but... No, we have the Icelandic krona. Yeah, 
But again, like in any modern country, I mean, you can use credit cards and this kind of thing. It's pretty advanced. In every, yeah, in every way that is a uh, uh, modern society that we live here in, and uh, the service is on a pretty high level, after yeah. my opinion. And the food is really good. The food, yeah. Uh, although, I mean, for some people, talking about food, I mean, we're coming up to the end here of the, of the segment. We have like one minute. Uh, some of the things that are, I mean, they're quite unique mm. here in Iceland. For example, you eat horses like normal. No. No? Uh, is horse like... eating is not as common as people think. Oh, no. that's another. Okay. <laughs> we eat, uh, the main course here is lamb and fish. And fish. And uh, all kinds of fish uh, products that we eat. Cod is uh, one of the main things. Langoustine. And the lamb is absolutely the most, uh, yeah, the most tasty uh, meat that you can have. Yeah. So where does that story about eating horse comes from? Like, I heard that before a lot. <laughs> you see a lot of horses, even in the wintertime, on the fields. Oh, because okay. the Icelandic horses are, are, pretty, are tough. pretty tough guys, and they got a thick uh, coat on during the winter. Or thick, yeah. And uh, they, can, they can survive uh, on the field even during the winter, even though it's uh, okay. covered with snow. So very quickly, we have like 20 seconds. You have a website for your company where people can find out about services here? Uh, I'm, uh, you know... Just independent, uh, oh, okay. tour guide. But guys, just go on a web, Google Iceland, traveling Iceland. You will find hundreds and hundreds of, of, of service and for websites. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. And uh, we're going to keep enjoying the few hours left that we have. Okay. Thank you. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.